Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from the home shop. Today we're just going to be talking about a little brake foundation here for this drum brake. Um, we're going to be pulling off the drum and shoes and pull off the S-cam and everything, show you what's actually going on in here. The first thing we need to do, we need to make sure our vehicle's chalked, have wheel chocks on a couple of axles, just to be safe, because we're going to be working with the brakes released the whole time. So we'll do that, we'll get it jacked up safely. We'll pull off the tires that are on there, and um, then we'll be at this point right here. So our first step we're going to do once we're at this point is we're going to release the parking brake, and we're going to then cage the parking brake spring that's in there, that big spring we've seen in other videos. We're going to cage that, and um, that way we're not um, working with any dangerous spring tension on any of our components. So we're going to make sure we still have air in our vehicle, we're going to push it on our push-pull valve on the dash, our yellow P2 valve. So we're going to release our brakes. You just saw the slack adjuster suck into here. We now have this spring in here caged with air. We're going to add a caging bolt to it now. We've shown this in other videos, but basically this caging bolt is just going to go in this hole in the back side of the brake chamber. We're going to push it in, do a quarter turn with it, tighten it up, hand tight. We got it in there, quarter turn, doesn't pull out. We got it tightened up hand tight. And now we're going to let all the air back out of this side of the brake chamber. We're just going to pull out on our yellow PP valve on the dash. Let's all the air out of the brake chamber. So now we don't have to worry about the spring tension and we don't have any air pressure or anything in any of these components in here. The next thing we have to do, we have to back the brakes off. So, depending on the style slack adjuster, it's either going to be a 7 16th, a 9 16th, or a 5 16th. This one here is the 7 16th style. I like to use an 11 millimeter. It's basically the same size, just a little bit um, snugger on there. So, we're going to use a 6.11 millimeter on here. Um, you definitely want to use 6 point, that way it doesn't get um, rounded off. So I got my ratchet, you'll see as we're adjusting this up here, if we turn in one direction it's going to make a clicking noise. So in that direction it makes a clicking noise, in our opposite direction there's no noise when we turn it. The way we want to turn it right now is the clicking noise way. The clicking noise way, we're backing the brakes off. We need to back the brakes off here so we can slide our drum off. A lot of times drums will have a little lip or something in there where the shoes will catch on it unless we back them off. Plus we need our brakes backed off anyways. So at this point, we're just gonna back them off all the way. So you know when you're all the way backed off, when you see the slack adjuster start to pull out. So I'll go back the other way to show you here. So you'll see the slack adjuster starts to pull out. If I keep going it this way, it's gonna pull it all the way out. But we don't want that either. So where we want it at, it's just right when it starts to pull out. So right there, that's where our, our brakes are backed off the most. Our drum's free. Um, we should be able to slide the drum off now. If it's stuck on there, you might have to hit it with a sledgehammer to break it loose. But this one should slide right off first. So be extra careful when taking off these brake drums. They do weigh between 75 and 120 pounds. This style right here is about 100 pounds, so if you need to, use a buddy. But the biggest thing is, watch your back, don't make any sudden movements, make sure you have a place to set it down at, and definitely watch your fingers. So just cradle it and slide it right off now. Okay, now we got it down to where we can see the shoes and everything in here. So if we were just changing out the shoes and stuff, um, this is as far as you had to pull it apart. But since we're going to be pulling out the S-cam out of this one, we got to pull the hub off too. So let me grab some tools here and we'll get this hub out of our way. Okay, so this assembly here is just off a um, steer axle. So it just has a regular hub cap on there. This is what you would see on a steer axle, a tag axle, or a trailer axle. The hubcap just goes on there. You just take the bolts out, 
It's going to be full of oil, so make sure you got something to catch the oil. We'll set this off to the side. We don't need that anymore right now. We'll take off our outer nut here. This one here is two and a half inch. The depends on the size of the axle, what the size of the nuts are. If this isn't a steer axle or anything like that, if it's a drive axle, it's going to have an actual axle shaft in there that you have to take out that you'll see in other videos. So just loosen this up counterclockwise. This outside nut's usually pretty tight, usually about 400 foot pounds. So break that loose. Once it's loose, it usually spins off pretty easy. So we'll just spin that nut off. Next you'll just see a little locking tab, a little locking ring. We'll talk about that in a different video when we talk about reassembling the hub assembly and doing the proper torque on everything. Then just our inner axle nut, it's usually just hand tight in there. Just take that off. Okay. Be careful at this point, there's a bearing there that's going to start sliding, so we should be able to pull this off now. Our bearing will pop out of there for us. Just inspect our bearing, we'll set that off to the side, we don't need that right now. Okay. Now our hub assembly should slide right off. Might be a little tight on there, the bearing's a little crooked. Okay, so we got that off, just be careful with it, set it off to the side. Okay, now with our hub out of the way there, you can see our springs and stuff a lot better. So, we have these springs back here. These springs don't have too much of a purpose besides just holding the shoes together at this end. This green spring here, this is going to be our return spring. So, when we apply our brakes, the shoes are going to push out. You'll see now, I'll step on the brakes. It'll push out our rod here, rotating our um, flak adjuster, rotating our S-cam out. So, stepping on the brakes, see the S-cam rotating right here, there's little rollers that ride on the S-cam that pushes the shoes out into the drum. So this here is where we gain a little bit more leverage too. This is where you'll see where we can take our brake chamber, taking the linear motion that we make inside here, turn it into rotational force out here, adding a little more leverage in the meantime into it. So you'll see when I step on the brake pedal here, this little S-cam right here is what's rotating. The S-cam rotates around, there's rollers that ride on there. Those rollers push up, pushing the shoes out into the drum that would be on there normally. You see my slack adjuster here coming out. So the slack adjuster is basically just attached to the S-cam, just like that would sit on there. And what this does, it just changes that linear motion from that rod into rotational motion. So our um, brake chamber rod just pushes on here, just rotates this S-cam. S-cam rollers, um, the brake rollers ride on here on the S-cam that push out into the shoe. We also gain a little more leverage here. Just from the middle of our shaft up to here, it's usually about six inches. So we get a half a foot more leverage, you know, um, with having this on here. Some of them you'll see two holes. Um, you just put it in whatever hole lines up the best, but obviously the higher you can go with it, the more leverage you're going to have. So if we have six inches of leverage here, you know, half a foot more leverage. So we take our 3,000 pounds of force we have coming out of this brake chamber. We add another six inches of leverage here. So that means we're adding another 1,500 foot-pounds of torque to it. So now we have 4,500 foot-pounds of torque. Our 3,000 plus 1,500 is 4,500 foot-pounds of torque coming out here. Our S-cam here is also like a leverage, but we're only gaining a few inches of movement here. So, you know, we might gain a few more pounds, but nothing like we do with this one here, or especially the brake chamber for force multiplication. Okay, our next step here is to take a little tension off this return spring right here we got to take off. So the best thing to do is take out our rollers next. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a pry bar, you put it down behind here, just wash your fingers, sometimes it does kick out on you. And you're just going to pry down just a little bit. And you'll see these little rollers will just unhook out of there. It's just a simple little squeeze clip on there. 
that hold them in there. They pop out pretty easy. We'll set those off to the side for now. Okay, now we'll take the one off the top shoe here. Same idea, we'll just put it in there, make sure it's in there good. If it's off to the side, you'll see here, I'll pull this out and let it snap. If it's off to the side, you get quite a bit of tension on the spring, could pop out, could get your fingers when you reach in there. So always make sure your pry bar is in a good spot before you put your fingers inside there. Just pops right out. Okay, now um, we took some tension off the shoes. You can see we can move them around pretty easy now. Okay, our next step here is to remove the um, return spring, this green spring here. So there's a couple different ways of doing it. On some models, there's enough slack in there where you can just take it off by hand. This isn't one of them. So you could either use a pry bar that's cut out with a notch in it, or I have a specialty brake tool here. Here's a brake tool that I made many years ago that I've used you know, hundreds and hundreds of times. That works pretty good. Basically, it just has this little notch right here so you can put it around the spring. And we're gonna use our axle here, it's just a fulcrum point where I could pry off of that. You see as I pull down on that, the spring elongates out a little bit. So I'm not gonna pry very hard to stretch out the spring totally. So I'm gonna reuse this one. Um, but I'm just gonna put a little tension on it. So I'm gonna hold up on the shoe and just very quickly and easily just pop that spring off. So I'm all set with my tool until I go to reassemble. Okay, so we'll get our spring right out of the way here. The next springs are pretty easy to take off. So you can see our shoe's loose now, just pivots here on the anchor pins. So now all I have to do is push down on the shoe, let it swing around out of the way. I come over behind it, lift up on it a little bit. You see my springs pop right off for me. Now I can take the shoe right off and the springs off. My next shoe comes right off, just lifts off. We'll set that off to the side. We'll inspect them here in a minute. So you see, we're down here pretty good now. So we just have a few things going on. We just have our S cam left in there, and we have these two pins over here. These are called the anchor pins. This is where the shoe rides. So these slide right out normally. If they're rusty for some reason, froze up in there, you have to either use a ball joint press or an anchor pin press, or a really good air hammer just to drive them out. It does have bushings in there. You do have to drive these out, replace the bushings. These ones slide right out, so we're good to go. Um, whenever you buy new brakes and stuff, it comes with all new um, hardware. So it'll come with the new anchor pins, new rollers, um, the new springs, um, basically everything you need there um, to reassemble the brakes. Um, so we'll just set these off to the side and we'll pull the S-cam out. Okay, now that we have our slack adjuster and everything out of the way, now we should be able to just slide the S-cam out. Um, these are greasable right here, they should be greased all the time. so should slide out pretty easy if you need to, you can pry on them with a pry bar or tap on the back side of the hammer, but usually they slide right out. So we pull that out, we can give it a quick little inspection here, you can see this one's worn down pretty good. So inside there there's a couple bearings and bushings that it rides on. It could be either one of these two different styles, either a nylon one or a brass one. The brass ones you're going to use in higher heat um, situations like wider brake drums. A standard drive brake drum, seven inches wide, but for like garbage trucks and stuff like that, they use eight inch wide or eight and five eighths wide. So then you'd have to go to the brass ones that hold up better under heat. So basically, you can see where the bearings are supposed to ride or the bushings. You can see this S cam's worn down pretty good here. So there's quite a bit of play in there. So we would definitely replace the bushings, and if we had to, we'd replace the S cam also. There's also just a little seal down inside this S-cam tube right here. You just pop the seal out with a pry bar or whatever, and then you can normally push these out pretty easy with a punch or some sort of driver. They come out fairly easy. You can drive them out from either end.
important thing with the seals here, um, the seal's made to keep the grease from coming out to the brakes here. So make sure that's on there. Make sure it's facing the right direction. Seals are made to go one way. So the tapered way would, um, if you put it in backwards, the taper would allow the grease to come out. So we have it this way, so it pushes on the seal if we had any grease pressure behind there, allowing it um, to stay in there and not come out. So it's very important to have these the right way, especially on this end. On the back side over here, we're going to purposely put them in backwards. We're going to have it in backwards back there, opposite from what you think it would be. That way if we grease it up, the grease, um, if it overpressurizes, will just come out onto the ground instead of coming out into our um, brake area here. So make sure this one's facing out like that. Make sure the back side's facing in like that, and you'll be all set to go. There's a bushing in both ends, one bushing down here, one bushing down at this end. You'll see here, we have two different S cams. So these S cams are off the same truck, but you know, so they're the same length and everything, got the same S to them, but the S's are facing different directions. We have a left hand rotation and a right hand rotation. The way you figure that out is you hold this like you would if it was Pinocchio's nose, put it right up to your nose. A little easier to demonstrate with this one. So um, hold it up like it would be your nose, and whatever eye sits down in the cradle um, is what rotation it is. So if I hold this one up like this, this eye is cradled here, so that means it's a right hand rotation. Just the opposite for this one that we took out here. I'll pull our little guard off so you can see better. So I hold it up to my nose here. My left eyeball gets cradled here in this little cup. So this would be a left hand rotation one. So it's very important to remember to, to go in the right spot Left rotation and right rotation does not mean left side of the truck or right side of the truck. It's just the, road, the way it rotates. Depends on where the axles um, sit in compared to where the brake chambers are sitting. They could be you know, in front of the axle or behind the axle. So um, some trucks will have right hand on the right side or left hand, or it could be right hand on one axle and left hand on the axle right in front of it. So just always make sure you pay attention when you take it out, pay attention when you put it back together. If you put the wrong S cam in there, as soon as you apply the brakes, the little S is going to rotate the wrong direction, just kicking your rollers out. What usually happens is your brakes will lock right up and you'll have to um, cut the brake drum off and get it off. Um, if that's not the case, at least the rollers will get knocked out and then your brakes won't function at all anymore. So we inspected this. Um, this one we would definitely replace, but if it was a good one, we would just check it out. We could replace our bushings and our seals, put everything back together. Usually when you get a bushing kit, it comes with both bushings for this side, new snap rings for down here, um, new seals for both ends, um, everything you need for it. So we'll just slide this back together here. Should slide in pretty easy. This guard on here just keeps the brake shoes from getting caught on this little lip right here. Just a little piece of tin. So we kind of line this up where we think it would need to be. And then we can slide our slack adjuster back on. Yeah, so get everything lined up where it needs to be. And you can put the um, pin back in the clevis up here. So always make sure you install the clevis pin um, inwards. If the brakes were all the way out right now, you could put it through this way. But if you ever had to take that out without um, taking the brakes off, you wouldn't be able to do it. So make sure you put it in this way. That way it'll help you out in the long run or definitely at least help out the next guy. So there's no tension on it, so it should slide in nice and easy. Make sure you put your cotter pin back in there. I've seen multiple times where people forget the cotter pin, then that um, clevis pin will fall out going down the road. You definitely don't want that. The brakes will still apply, but you know it's not a good thing to see you know pieces missing out of your brake system. Okay, 
So everything there looks good. So our anchor pin's over here. Um, if you get a new set of brake shoes, it comes with all the hardware you get. You'll get new anchor pins, new rollers, new springs, new everything. So if you're replacing the brakes, you would um, change everything out. If you're just, you know, taking these off to work on something else behind there, and maybe change out the ABS sensor or something else, then you could reuse everything as long as it's in good shape. So if you do have the anchor pins out, make sure. Okay, guys, so we just put a nice little layer of never sees on the anchor pins. Put them back in if you're using them, spin them around, make sure it's well lubricated. If they do seize up in there, remember they're a little hard to get out, so we want to always make sure they you know, have good never seize on them. Okay, so now we're ready to put our brakes back together. So we're going to grab the top shoe. Um, after we inspect them and everything, make sure there's no cracks or oil or anything on them. They're okay to reuse unless they're worn out, and we would obviously replace them with new ones. So um, I'll grab the top shoe here. Okay, so our top shoe is just going to sit down on there. We'll just let it hang out there. Okay, then we're going to grab our springs. We have our three different springs here. Well, two of the same, one different one. So this one here remembers our return spring. So I like to get all my springs on there and lined up before I take stuff apart. So I'm just going to stick that up on there, get everything rotated to where I want it to go. That way, when I've got everything up there, I'm not fighting with anything. So I'm going to take these two springs here. These springs don't do too much. They just keep the shoes on here from falling apart and, you know, falling into the drum. They don't really do much for a return. They're kind of just hold together springs. So when I tell people to grab these for me or something, I usually just call them the little earring ones because you now they kind of just hang on the back like earrings would. So I call these the earring springs, but they're really just the to hold the anchor pin out onto the shoe. Okay, so we'll just put those in the hole there, let them just hang out there. We'll grab our bottom shoe. Okay, so our bottom shoe we're just going to set on here now. Just line up those springs into the holes and kind of just push it around. Okay, so sometimes it'll spring back on you, sometimes it'll hang out where you want it to, but now it gives you a chance, hands-free, to get the next stuff situated. So this is the ideal position to have it right now. Obviously on some trucks it's gonna be at different angles and make it a little harder, but I have some specialty clamps I made over the years that I welded up to hold the shoes if you're in that situation. But if it's like this, you're good to go right now. Just grab our little spring tool again. I like to get all the springs lined up where I want it to be. So now I'm just going to push the shoe up. I'm going to pull down on this spring lever here. Get that spring just hook into our little clip inside our shoe. And then pull it up around. Just a little downward pressure there. Now our spring's hooked onto our little clip in here. There's a pin that goes through there. Give everything a shake. Make sure the spring's on there good. Make sure the back springs are both on there. If for some reason this spring here isn't on there all the way and it pops off, it's going to let the shoes fall into the drum and kind of just ride on it. Usually your lower shoe will get worn right out because it'll just be laying on the drum. Okay, now that we got our springs and stuff in there, now we can put our little rollers in there. So remember you have two rollers. So you can see now that the one's going to be a little harder to get in there because of the way the S is. So what we want to do is start with that one. So just like when we took it off, you want to put your pry bar in there. Make sure you got good tension on it. Make sure it's not going to slip out or anything. If it slips out, it can hurt your fingers. We're just going to put it in there. So it can really go in either way. Um, it's usually easier if you even put it in that way so you can pull out on this little tapered retaining clip there uh, with your finger and get it to lock in. On some of the older S-cams, um, this little retaining clip will get caught on the S-cam, but with Q-plus brakes, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So we're just going to put it in the easiest, convenient way for us. So just pry up on it a little bit, get it down in there, and you can put your finger in there with the pry bar, and just 
pull out on the little spring there, make sure it's locked in good. But for some reason, um, that falls off or breaks off, uh, just replace it with a new one. It usually comes with all the new brake kits, so there's usually a bunch of kicking around, truck shops and stuff. Um, the brakes still will function without them. It's just an added little safety thing in there in case a rock or something gets in the shoe and you know kicks it apart real quick or something. This roller's not going to fall out. If the roller falls out, then our brakes don't work too good. Okay, so we've got our upper roller in. Now we're just going to put our bottom one in. Same thing, we're going to pry down. Okay, we got that in there. Get our pry bar out, inspect everything. You can see our rollers are pushing the shoes out a little bit. So before we get ready to put the drum on, we're going to back the brakes off one more time. It's always best to get everything set before you have, you know, 120 pound brake drum in your hand. So we're going to back this off a little bit. So the way it clicks, we'll just go until it just, you know, starts to bottom out there. And now we're going to assemble our hub assembly on there. Um, to assemble the hub assembly, watch the hub how-to video to get all the proper backlash and torques and everything. But um, for today, we're just going to throw it on there so we can throw our drum on so we can finish up. Okay, now that we have the hub assembly back on there, remember watch the how-to video to do that. Now we're going to install our brake drum on there. We want to make sure the brakes are adjusted to where they need to be so we're not going to be fighting the shoes once we get the drum up that high. The drum's pretty heavy, so use a buddy if you need to. Remember, watch your back and watch your fingers. You're going to see as I come in here, I'm kind of going to set it here. Let the shoes kind of hold it for a second while I um, readjust my hand so I can slide it on. Uh, remember, as you go to slide it on, make sure your fingers are out of there. So this one here is about 100 pounds. Uh, pretty hefty. So I like to kind of balance it on the shoes there. I like to get underneath it, kind of cradle it, slide it up onto the shoes. The hard part is getting the studs to line up where you need them to. Sometimes you got to get down in front of it a little bit. Then slide it on and make sure it's on there all the way. Once you're on there all the way, you're going to remount your tires and everything before you do any adjustments to the brakes. You're going to remount your wheels, torque everything down to where it's supposed to be before we do any brake adjustments here. So. I'm just going to run a couple lug nuts on here real quick. I'm not going to put tires on it. Okay, now i got my brake drum back on there all the way. I've had my wheels on. I've had everything torqued down to where they need to be for this outboard style here. Hub Pilot, be 500 foot-pounds for the lug nuts. Um, then we're okay to adjust our brakes up. So to adjust our brakes up, right now we can either make sure our cage bolts all the way tight. We definitely don't want any spring tension on there. But the best way to do it to make sure everything's working properly is we're going to air up the truck all the way, um, up to 120 PSI, and we're going to release the parking brake again. It's probably by now all the air would have leaked out, they would have applied by now if we didn't have our Cajun bolt in there. So let's do that. Okay, so I got my vehicle aired all the way up to 120 PSI. Now I can release my parking brake again, you know, pushing on the yellow PP knob. That's going to put the full system pressure into our brake chamber here. At this point I can take out my caging bolt. Just a three-quarter wrench on most of them. Just loosen it up until you can push it in a ways and then give it a quarter turn and it'll come out for you. Okay, now just save that in your toolbox till next time. Okay, so now we can adjust our um, brakes here. So we'll keep everything pushed in. We, um, we'll have the vehicle off, we'll have it locked out, we'll have wheel chocks on, everything still, still ready to go. So it'll be safe when we're underneath there. So now what we're gonna do to adjust the brakes to where they need to be, we're gonna rotate it, the slack adjuster, the way it doesn't click. So we're gonna keep cranking. You shouldn't hear the clicking noise. Remember, if we go the other way, you hear the clicking noise. So we're gonna go the way it doesn't click until we can't go any farther. Once we can't go any farther, that means the shoes are all the way against the drum. So like right now, I wouldn't be able to rotate that so the shoes are all the way out to the drum. So I have. The shoe's contacting the drum all the way, I can't go any farther. Now I take my ratchet, get it to a spot where I can clearly do a turn on it. So I'm going to set it up and I'm going to do a quarter turn to back it off. So see I did a quarter turn there. So with my quarter turn backed off, I should have slight rotation here. 
Should be able to rotate it just a little bit, just slight drag. So I can rotate it around. Okay, so now I could, um, I should be all set here. Now I can get a tape measure out and measure my brake strokes just to make sure. So when we measure brake strokes, what we're actually measuring is how far that rod comes out when we apply the brakes. You'll see why that's very important here in a minute. So what we do with our brakes all the way released, we do this two different ways. You can do it with the parking brake or have someone up in the cab to step on the foot brake pedal. Um, both ways should be give you the same measurement. If you're at a DOT stop, the DOT officer usually has someone up in the cab pushing on the brake pedal. That way they can get the brake strokes and listen for air leaks while they're under there. But if you're by yourself, it's just okay to use the parking brake to get brake strokes. So we'll measure it to a spot where we can remember it. So I'll go from the chamber here right to this um, center of this pin, to the clevis pin here. It's exactly four inches right now. So now I'm going to apply my brakes. Okay, so now it's exactly at five inches. So what DOT looks for Department of Transportation, when they check these out, they're looking for less than, um, well, depending on the size of the brakes, has to be less than inch and seven eighths stroke coming out of there. So, um, like where I worked before, our maximum that we could have was inch and three quarters stroke coming out. So this one's right at, you know, one inch right now. So, you know, as this wears out and stuff, we might get a little more stroke out of there. Or if the slack adjuster isn't working properly, it's not gonna stay in adjustment very good. So that's why it's very important to measure all the brake strokes every time you do a PM and you know measure them when you're done you know servicing the brakes make sure you document it that way if something happens you cover your own butt a little bit okay so right there we're at five inches so that's really perfect we have a really good angle here of our slack adjuster to our brake canister if we start extending the rod out too far we're not going to have our good um, straight down 90 degree leverage anymore you start, you know, getting out of ways, you know, you don't have straight pushing motion, you kind of lose some of the force. So, now what we're going to do, I'm going to release the brakes again, I'm going to back them off a ways and show you why it's important that we have um, proper brake adjustment. My brakes are backed off right now. So now if I applied my parking brake here, you can see my rod comes out a lot further. See what we're at now. So we are at four originally before they came out. Um, when we had them adjusted properly, it was at five inches. So now we're at almost seven inches. Yep, so we're at about two and seven eighths um, brake stroke there. So the problem with that is, if we go over here now, our um, brake chamber here is fully applied. It's out as far as it can go. But look at this. We have no brakes whatsoever. So if our brakes are adjusted wrong, if they're backed all the way off and we apply them, there's not enough travel in this brake chamber here. There's not enough stroke to it to make it so our brakes apply all the way. So if you have a malfunctioning slack adjuster, one that doesn't click properly, one that's misadjusted to put on, um, if the mechanic adjusts them the wrong way, we could easily have no brakes on the truck there. That's why DOT does the measurement. So we'll release our brakes again, send them back to where it needs to be. Okay, so remember, we're gonna rotate it the way it doesn't click, we're going to turn it as far as we can until it contacts the drum all the way. We can't go any further. You don't have to reef on it or anything, just slight pressure on it. It's good. Now we're going to back it off a quarter to half a turn. So here's a quarter turn. I'll go a half this time just to show you the difference. Okay, now I apply my parking brake again. Okay, 
So we started with four, now we're up to five and a quarter. So we added a, another quarter inch of brake stroke, but the inch and a quarter is still within spec. We're not over the inch and seven eighths um, DOT standards. So we're good to go here. So now we're all set to leave it. So um, I suggest anytime you have a truck in, a big over the road truck with air brakes on it, make sure you get the brake stroke, especially if you're doing preventive maintenance or anything. Um, log the thickness of the brakes, the condition of the brakes and the drums. Make a record of everything. You know, lots of people' lives are in danger um, every time these trucks are out on the road, especially if stuff isn't adjusted properly.